Welcome to the American Heart Association Go Red for Women Musical Benefit, Hearts and Music. I'm Brooke Josephson and I'm honored to be hosting live from my living room in Los Angeles, along with my dear friend and longtime collaborator, TV film and theater director, Michelle Bossy. Hi everyone, I'm thrilled to be co-hosting this special event with singer-songwriter Brooke Josephson. Yes, Brooke and I met in New York City early in our careers and have blossomed over the years. Personally, I was her maid of honor, and professionally, we've made stage and film projects together and are honored to be hosting this benefit to support Go Red for Women. The purpose of tonight's event is to raise funds and awareness for the unique issues surrounding women's heart disease and to begin the critical journey toward creating women's health equity. Brooke and I will be watching the thermometer and chat as the funds come in while doctors educate survivors inspire and music heals our souls we want to give a special shout out to the american heart association circle of red members who are with us tonight thank you for your commitment to the work of the american heart association and to show our appreciation for the circle of red members supporting the go red for women movement we will be offering them a virtual vip after party meet and greet at the conclusion of tonight's show and for those of you who want to join the Circle of Red during the event by making a $1,000 donation, you will not only receive the virtual VIP experience link to attend the after party VIP experience, to meet and greet with Diane Reeves, Kurt Elling, Janice Siegel, Jeroen Jurkowski, Sarah Gazarik, John A. Kendrick, and Lauren Cannon, but will also be part of an elite group of supporters who have the desire to significantly impact finding a cure for the number one killer of women. It's easy to give. Simply text hearts and music to 41444 and become a Circle of Red member. And remember, no donation is too small. Together, we can save lives by supporting the American Heart Association. So, without further ado, to open our event is Tony Award-winning star of the original Broadway production of Cats, the one and only Betty Buckley. Back to by the angelic voices of Janice Siegel from the Manhattan Transfer and Lauren Kinnan of the New York Voices. Lauren's sister, Kate Kinnan, featured in this performance is a dancer and a beautiful soprano who was diagnosed with mitral valve prolapse. Yes, as a newlywed at age 35, she got a bacterial infection and became very ill, suffering many strokes. And it took months for the doctors to figure out what was happening, since doctors weren't looking for heart disease in a healthy 35-year-old dancer. Ultimately, she required a valve replacement and she opted for two open heart surgeries. The first, a bovine valve, allowed her to have two beautiful daughters when the doctor said she wouldn't be able to have children. The second, a permanent valve that saved her life. So we are thrilled to have these ladies open the event on a high note of hope. Here we go. I come to sing a song about hope. I'm not inspired much right now, but even so I came out here to sing a song, so here I go I guess I think that if I tinker long enough One might appear, and look, it's here One verse is done, the work's be gone I've come to sing a song about hope in spite of everything ridiculous and sad though I'm beyond belief depressed, confused and mad well, I got dressed I underestimated how much that would take I didn't break until right now I sing of hope and don't know how so maybe so maybe I can substitute strength because I'm strong I'm strong in I didn't think 
think I could And so did you I know that's true And so I sing a song about hope Though I can't guarantee there's something real behind it We have to try to show our daughters we can find it And so today When life is crazy and impossible to bear It must be there Fear never wins That's what I hope That's what I hope See, I said hope The work begins Guarantee there's something real behind it. We have to try to show our daughters we can find it. And so today, when life is crazy and impossible to bear, it must be there. Must be there. Fear never wins. Fear never wins. That's what I hope. See, I said, oh, the work begins. Mm-hmm. Hope. That was my beloved baby sister, Kate Kinnan Spector, and her beautiful daughters, Sophie and Charlotte, with a cameo from Little Maisie. My name is Lauren Kinnan, and um, I am so grateful to the American Heart Association um, for really making it possible that I can still have my sister on this planet and those beautiful nieces. And I am grateful that she shared her story with us tonight, because I do think seeing is believing. I do really feel like you saw with your own eyes the miracle of medicine and the fact that we need to do more and learn more, and in particular, learn learn more about women and heart disease. So tonight, will you text, make a donation? It's super easy. 41444 is all you need to do to text, or you can find the link in the comments. So let's go red for women. And in particular, let's show our daughters we know how to find it. Thank you so much. I just love what she said. Show our daughters how to find it. That's so beautiful. Really beautiful, really yes. inspiring story. Mm-hmm. Yes, and we already, we, we just took a look at the thermometer and want to give a shout out to those of you who've already donated. We're at over $1,200 at the start of the event this evening. So thank you so much. Um, we have Sherry Schultz that made a donation and Dan- Danielle Grout. So thank you so much. We're just getting started. I'm excited. Um, this next survivor story comes from a dear friend of mine from high school in Warsaw, Indiana. 
I have fond memories of us working at Courthouse Coffee after theater or mm-hmm. choir practice and blasting show tunes on our ride to school. I was shocked, though, to learn that she is a SCAD survivor. And for those who don't know what SCAD is, it's a spontaneous coronary artery, artery dissection that is an uncommon occurrence. But because it occurs spontaneously, it's important to recognize the signs and symptoms to get treatment immediately. Before she shares her story, I want to give a round of applause to Lori Green, who has played a vital role in bringing us all together this evening and making this benefit possible. Thank you, and please welcome Lori Green. Hey, everyone. I am so grateful to be a part of this evening's concert benefiting the American Heart Association. Um, I'm not going to sing for you this evening, but I will share with you my survivor story. So I had a heart attack when I was 37 years old. It wasn't your typical heart attack caused by high blood pressure or um, high cholesterol. It was caused by something called spontaneous coronary artery dissection or SCAD. Um, It happened while I was on the road. I was tour managing the Manhattan transfer and take six. And we had just gotten into Lansing, Michigan. I had gotten everybody checked into the hotel and I went to the gym for a little while. And I had some dinner and relaxed and watched an episode of Fosse and had a glass of wine. It was a typical travel day. Um, But I got back to my hotel room that night and started to feel this weird kind of heartburn feeling sensation in my chest. And I started to get nauseous and woozy and took some Tums and that didn't seem to help. And then I started vomiting uncontrollably and knew something was really wrong. So... I called our sound engineer, Matt, and asked him to come with me to the ER um, where they ran tests and my EKG was fine. My vitals were fine, but there was an enzyme in my blood work um, that was elevating. It's called troponin. And that is a, a red flag that there's some sort of distress with your heart. So I stayed overnight. They continued to run tests. And in the morning, a resident at the time, uh, her name's Dr. Faiza Chowdhury. She came into my room and said, I think I know what's going on with you. And I'm glad I'm on your case because it's kind of rare and I wanna get you into a cath lab right away. So um, I was sent up to the cath lab and they sent a camera in through my arm, through the artery in my arm into my heart. And that camera was able to see that a small tear had formed in my LAD. This tear was allowing blood to seep in between the layers of my artery wall, and it was creating um, kind of a blood blister. It was it was a tissue clot, and that blood blistery tissue clot was causing a blockage that was a heart attack. So instead of stenting it, uh, which could have caused complications, um, they sent me home. Not that day. I stayed in one more day, but they sent me home with a prescription to rest and let it heal on its own. I was also on medication. I took aspirin and metoprolol and Plavix to keep my blood thin, but I, I was told to rest. I was told I couldn't lift anything more than 20 pounds. Um, I really had to manage my stress and, and I was also told that I had to be very careful when it came to having children Um, not impossible, but the fact of the matter is that most women that have SCAD are either pregnant or postpartum. So there's a hormonal element to this condition. Mostly though, I was told to rest and let this, this tear heal on its own, which it did. And I will tell you that a big part of my healing process was involved music because there were a lot of nights laying in the hospital by myself wondering what I did to cause this and why this was happening to me. All this anxiety was building up. I would put my headphones on and, and listen to something and listen to somebody that I know and work with. And, and there was this feeling of like comfort and I wasn't alone and I'm forever going to be grateful for that music. Hi, I'm Janice Siegel from the Manhattan Transfer. 
And heart disease has been a part of my life since I was a little girl. Uh, my grandmother, Anna, had heart disease as a complication of her late onset diabetes. And I remember having to keep an eye on her to help keep her stress levels low and not to exacerbate her heart condition. But women's heart health really hit home for me a couple of years ago when I was on the road with the Manhattan Transfer. And our 37-year-old tour manager, Lori Green, had a heart attack caused by SCAD. Not to be confused with SCAT, but SCAD, Spontaneous Coronary Artery Dissection. Scary sounding acronym. Uh, the night it happened though, she seemed perfectly fine. But I remember being awoken early by an email saying she was in the hospital after a long, painful and frightening night. Uh, so we visited her just before she was brought into the cath lab where a doctor explained that Lori had suffered a tear in the lining of one of the arteries of her heart. And there was nothing they could really do about it, uh, but that it would heal on its own. But they warned us that she wouldn't be able to schlep around heavy road cases or luggage anymore. Uh, but it shows that heart disease can be a stealthy killer. And as women, we tend to power through and take care of everyone and everything before we look at our own health. So I'm so thankful that Lori took care of herself, listened to her body and was persistent, went to the hospital, got the help she needed. But luckily there was one doctor in Lansing that had heard of SCAD and knew to look for it. I'm so proud to be part of this Hearts and Music concert you're going to be enjoying this evening. Uh, it's benefiting Go Red for Women and the American Heart Association. So please donate, give what you can to this wonderful organization that's working to raise awareness about SCAD and other elements of women's heart health. Just text Hearts and Music to 41444 or click on the link in the comments and make your pledge. Thank you so much. Enjoy the music. You know, it's so true what Janice Siegel just said about women that we have a tendency to power. We'll just white knuckle through any situation. And I personally know Lori when she would stage manage our shows and help manage at the coffee house, even in high school, it was in her. It was that driven work ethic that, you know, it's just, it, it's mind boggling that at age 37, healthy, that, you know, this happened. I'm relieved to hear that she's okay. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and it's so important this benefit this evening that we are, you know, spreading awareness um, as well as raising funds to continue the life-saving work that the uh, um, American Heart Association provides. Well, Lori's story encourages all of us to share our own personal stories of why we're passionate about supporting the American Heart Association please share in the chat. Mm -hmm. And when you make a donation, please note in the chat who it is an honor for. Thank you. Yes, we would love to hear your stories because sharing not only brings us together to spread awareness, but the funding enables the American Heart Association to continue their life-saving scientific research for those fighting cardiovascular disease. And my own family had a scare a few years ago when my husband, who has played hockey for years, cycles 26 miles a day on his road bike, eats healthy, meditates to manage stress, suddenly had issues with his heartbeat being severely irregular, where it would go from racing to dropping to the point of fainting. And after several tests, he was diagnosed with AFib, which is atrial fibrillation. And we learned after months of trying several medications that the only way to address his AFib was to fly to Austin, Texas and have Dr. Andre Natali at the Texas Cardiac Arrhythmia Institute perform his pioneering AFib ablation procedure. I've provided links in the chat for anyone interested in learning more. Barry is so fit and healthy. You would never expect he would have AFib. I know, and our 11-year-old daughter, Shira, just recently asked to get CPR certified over her spring break to be prepared not only for babysitting, but even if an adult near her goes into cardiac duress, she's prepared to help. She's incredible. I love that girl. Our next performance comes from the renowned 15-time nominated and two-time Grammy-winning 
and, seven, and 12 Jazz Journalist Awards for Male Vocalist of the Year. I'm thrilled to welcome the one and only Kurt Elling. This can't be love because I feel so well. No sobs, no sorrows, no sighs. This cannot be love because I don't get no dizzy spells. And my head is not in the sky. My heart will not stand still. Just hear it beat. This is too sweet. To be loved This cannot be love Because I just feel so blooming good And yet I'd love to look in your eyes Dana Hall My heart will not stand still Just hear it beat This is much, much too sweet For it, I mean I am in love This cannot be love Because I just feel so blue and good And yet I long to look I have so long to gain This is Kurt Elling. Let's all go red for women. Please give what you can to the American Heart Association. Thank you. I don't know about you, but I could not stand still during that whole thing. And then when he ended, I was like, 
jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> like I couldn't help that it. Was I, it was yeah, amazing. I can't be like, okay, yeah, like just just stand here and be cool. Like it was in me. I felt it. It was so, great. I don't know about you watching live, but I'm excited. We jumped over 2,000. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Let's keep this moving. The beauty of holding a virtual concert, as many have done over the past year, is that magnificent performers like Kurt Elling can be enjoyed from the comfort of your home. In addition to direct donations tonight, we also have an online silent auction that you'll find the link for in the chat. We also want to bring education to you tonight from three amazing physicians who are going to touch briefly on topics that impact women's health. Here is Dr. Edie Jones Poland, Dr. Faiza Chowdhury, and Dr. Tasha Muse. Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Edith Jones Poland, and I'm the chairwoman for the American Heart Association Go Red for Women in the Coachella Valley. I hope everybody is enjoying the show and having a good time. Before we hear from our next performers, we want to take a few minutes and to remind everyone why we're here today and that it's not only to raise funds to support the work of the American Heart Association, but also to raise awareness around women's greatest health threat, heart disease. I'm joined by two amazing physicians, Dr. Faiza Chowdhury from Detroit, Michigan, and Dr. Katasha Muse from Tennessee. Welcome, Dr. Chowdhury and Dr. Muse. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, don't panic. We're not gonna spend the next hour telling you about the science behind cardiovascular disease, although we could. So we're gonna spend just a few minutes to talk with you about some really important topics around women's heart health. Now, we've all heard Lori's story and what a great reminder that women's symptoms can be so different than men. And that women are also, women also have unique risk factors. Dr. Chowdhury and Dr. Muse, as the three of us know, it's easy for women to be misdiagnosed when it comes to heart disease. So let's talk a little bit about the importance of, the importance of women being their own advocate in regards to their health. Dr. Chowdhury, can you start us off? Yep, sure. Um, so the woman presents with unique challenges, um, as you mentioned, and it could be as simple as atypical presentation of um, heart disease. Like typically people present with a chest pain. That's what we know like someone might be having a heart issue, but women can present with um, symptoms like back pain, jaw pain, neck pain, which might not be directly with sometimes like belly pain um, that can be taken um, misdiagnosed and not be taken as seriously. And they can be diagnosed as like a stress or anxiety causing it. Um, also women go through unique um, stages in their life like pregnancy, and menopause that can have um, risk factors and um, the condition itself can predispose them to cardiovascular disease like uh, gestational diabetes, hypertension, and then with uh, menopause, hormonal changes can um, cause lipid metabolism and issues like that. Um, as well as in this country, we have women disproportionately being Im impacted by autoimmune diseases more, such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and they serve as risk factor for coronary artery disease which a lot of women are not aware of. Um, so having a provider that is aware of the unique ch uh, challenges that women face are very important and for women to self uh, um, uh, to be their uh, self-advocate, like, hey, I have rheumatoid arthritis. Am I a high risk for heart disease? Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Dr. Muse, can you comment about women being their own health advocates? Yes, ma'am. I agree wholeheartedly with Dr. Chowdhury. Uh, for example, with one of my patients, Ashanti uh, Coleman from Memphis, she suffered uh, a stroke. Um, however, she presented with just migraine and was diagnosed with TIA and discharged from the hospital on aspirin. Uh, with her being her own advocate, she persisted that she did not feel well and presented to yet a different hospital where they found over 50% blockage in her right carotid artery. So definitely being a self-advocate and just, just explaining to that, you know, I don't feel well, uh, can lead to them actually saving uh, a woman's life. So I agree with Dr. Chaudhary to her point. Yeah, thank you, ladies. So what I'm kind of hearing from you both is that Women are unique. We're not the same as men. We have our own risk factors, things like you mentioned, Dr. Chowdhury, pregnancy, birth control. You mentioned Dr. Muse, autoimmune disease. So women knowing that about their bodies and saying, look, hey, I'm different. You need to listen to me and take this seriously and help me, help me to stay healthy. Exactly.
Fighting heart disease and stroke in women is important to me because I don't want to be a statistic. I want to live a long and healthy life, and I want the same for you. It's a sobering thought to know that heart disease and stroke is the number one killer of women and that both disproportionately affect African Americans. As I started doing my research, I started changing my life right away because I realized that I could be that one in one in three. So I'm wearing red today as we fight against heart disease and stroke in women and asking you to join the fight by making a donation. All you have to do is text hearts and music to 41444. That's hearts and music to 41444. Now, I'd like for you to hear my rendition of one of my favorite Johnny Mendel songs, A Time for Love. And I'm accompanied by my dear friend, Hamero Lubombo. Well, everybody stay lifted and more than anything, be good to yourself. Enjoy.
but best of all, a time for It is a time for love. My five-time Grammy-winning Diane Reeves just gave me chills. Whew. She's I love her voice and spirit. I agree with everybody in the chat that's like on fire. <laughs> She's amazing. Mm -hmm. And that health equity is her passion, and she values everyone's health equally. The CDC defines the achievement of health equity as when every person has the opportunity to attain his or her full potential. Yes, and then to have Diane Reeves share her gorgeous vocal talent with us this evening is truly an honor for us all. We all know that taking care of our bodies is one of the first steps to preventing heart disease, but did you know that taking care of your mental health is just as important? Yes, here to lead us in a mindful minute is a special guest who has been practicing acupuncture and Eastern medicine for over 30 years. Please welcome Dr. Patricia Van Santen. Welcome to a moment of mindfulness. Tara Brock calls it the sacred pause. That is the moment when you recognize where you are and you bring a kind attention to it. This begins by feeling your feet on the ground, your hands in your lap, and the rise and fall of your breath. Perhaps you notice your breath coming in is a little cooler than the breath going out. Continue to breathe and notice your breath and where you feel it. As you do so, soften your brow, let your shoulder blades relax, feel your back completely letting go, your spine long. Thich Nhat Hanh's practice, breathing in, I have arrived, breathing out, I am home, is a profound way to bring a sense of well-being to every part of your life at any time. Breathing in, I have arrived, breathing out, I am home. May all beings see and be seen. May all beings touch a deep and lasting peace. Thank you. Lay a wooden fence in a big backyard Holding up against the wind Painted white to cover up its flaws And it keeps the sun from getting To see, to see what grows Cause beauty comes from things unknown Me love for I try my best Try my best To let it grow, to let it rest And the wisteria grew to break my walls Cracking my facade
Hi everyone. Hi. Hi. Hi, this is Erin from Sage. This is Sarah Gazarek from Sage. This is Amanda from Sage. I'm Jeanne from Sage and we are thrilled. We are so excited. We are very happy. We're so excited to join so many other incredible artists in this year's Hearts and Music. Hearts and Music. For hearts and Music. For Hearts and Music. We all have that special woman in our lives, a mother, grandmother, sister, or even sisters in song, like my beautiful sage women. Did you know that heart disease and stroke is their number one health threat? I can't imagine my life without them. My love of music came from my mom. What I didn't know is that stroke and heart disease are also hereditary. Heart disease is the number one killer for all Americans and stroke is also a leading cause of death. As frightening as those statistics are, the risks of those diseases are even higher for African Americans. Fighting heart disease and stroke is important to me because my grandmother actually developed heart disease later in her life and I'm now learning that one in three women die from heart disease and stroke. Please be sure to text Hearts and Music. Please be sure to text to donate. Be sure to text Hearts and Music. Text to donate Hearts and Music, one word, to 41444. Hearts and Music to the number 41444. Hearts and Music to 41444. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Such a treat to have Sage share their beautiful voices with us. They just received their first Grammy nomination in November 2020 in the Best Arrangement Instruments and Vocals category for their first composition, Desert Song. Congratulations, and thank you for sharing your personal stories. Yes, I mean, even just listening, <laughs> that was such a beautiful song, and, and to have the mindfulness moment before, I know uh, living in Los Angeles, the traffic, Sometimes I have to practice, and this past year I've learned about practicing the importance of just breathing and being you know, in the moment, but then also the power, healing power of music. So their voices were so beautiful and healing. Like I just, I felt chill Absolutely. while they were singing. So thank you, ladies. Absolutely. We want to uh, do a little update for yes. you. Yes, we also, um, I just wanted to say thank you to those that have shared um, and made a donation in honor of someone. Barb Morell donated in memory of my father and brother who both died at age 61 of heart attacks and my two siblings who have heart disease now you know we're so sorry for the losses and thank you so much for supporting the efforts that the American Heart Association continues to do to um, just tonight all of the awareness that's taking place um, whether like we've said so many times young old healthy it you know it doesn't matter it's just listening to your body and taking care of yourself. So thank you so much, Barb, for sharing and making a donation in their honor. 
Absolutely. To that end, our next survivor story comes from a healthy, fit, young nurse practitioner and mother who is a two-time stroke survivor. She recently completed her doctorate and is in the process of publishing her own research on black women and cardiovascular disease. She has used her own experience as an inspiration to research stroke prevention for African-American women. Please welcome Ashanti Coleman. I'm Ashante Coleman. I'm a 38 year old wife, mother of two. I'm a nurse practitioner and I'm a stroke survivor and this is my journey. Okay, so it started on November the 9th, 2017. I woke up with a, head, a really bad headache on the right side of my head. Um, I continued throughout the day because I typically don't take medications for a headache. I usually lie down. But this particular day, I was going about my day and thinking it would just wear off. I had a conversation with my husband and noticed that I started having some numbness and tingling down the left side of my hand, of my arm. Um, after that, then my speech became slurred. And immediately, I, I knew because I'm a nurse practitioner, I knew the signs and symptoms, but I'm um, thinking to myself, I'm 38 years old, surely I'm not having a stroke. And then my coordination went, and I knew then that that's what it was. My husband knew when my speech went, and he was like, something's not right. I grabbed my phone and called 911. The doctor came in and told me that I had a clot and, was, and had a stroke from the clot. I was shocked, first of all, and second of all, I was, couldn't believe that it was happening to me because, again, I had no risk factors and I was healthy. I had just lost 20 pounds and was literally running on the trail me the night before that it happened. Um, I instantly thought about my family, what's going to happen to me, am I going to make it, um, who's going to pick my kids up from school and get them to the activities. It's very important to get that rehabilitation. That contributes to how quickly you may or may not um, rehab. So getting the rehabilitation um, in a timely fashion is very vital to how quickly you're able to rebound and, and get back to functioning working and taking care of your kids. So we know that um, it's difficult enough for women to receive um, adequate treatment in our healthcare system. And we know that um, racial and ethnic um, groups, different racial and ethnic groups also face healthcare, healthcare disparities as well, which can make it even more challenging um, for these women to get the healthcare that they need. So um, let's talk about that a little bit. So Dr. Chowdhury, I'm gonna start off with you. Um, can you can you make some comments around that, please? Yeah. Um, so I think this goes along with the heart of American Heart Association, the concept behind this concert to raise uh, research funds, um, because traditionally women have actually unfortunately been misrepresented, underrepresented in big um, cardiovascular and research trials that forms the basis of our uh, current cardiology pr practice. So if you have a population underrepresented, and that goes same for the ethnic groups, African-American, Native Americans. Um, so if we don't have the data even showing the unique challenges that they experience from our big research trials, then we are really... Um, not helping or uh, female patients here or ethnic patients here. So uh, we need more representation from females in research studies. And that's the whole point of uh, American Heart Association fundraising and uh, research. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, that's why I love the Go Red movement. So, yes. so fantastic. Dr. Muse, can you make a comment as well, please? Exactly. Um, so not only you know, do the patients and women need to be aware of their healthcare disparities, but uh, also be mindful to choose the healthcare provider who is culturally competent in knowing what um, diseases affect women and how they should treat them and just kind of tailor that treatment towards them. I love that. That's great. So it's about getting women into the right places, getting them into um, doing the research, participating in the research, and then, like you said, Dr. Muse, making the right fit. So looking around and finding that right doctor that really listens to you and doesn't minimize your symptoms, your, your desires for your life. So 
Thank you so much for joining us today, both of you, Dr. Chowdhury and Dr. Muse. I've really enjoyed talking with you and you've shared some really valuable information for everybody. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. I'm Anne Hampton Calloway, and I'm so glad to be supporting Go Red for Women. What an important, important cause this is, because as you know, women have gotten the short stick of medical research and funding for way too long. And tonight is an opportunity for us to pull our resources and really do something special to support each other. Uh, heart disease runs in my family. I lost my beloved father to it and uh, my grandmother. And it's, uh, it's really so important to take care of your health and to be a real advocate for this cause. So to celebrate the fellowship that we are gathering together tonight, here is my favorite Gershwin classic with much love to all of you. The more I read the papers, the less I comprehend. The world and all its capers And how it all will end Nothing seems to be lasting But that isn't our affair We've got something permanent I mean That was just stunning. Anne Hampton Calloway's performance of the Gershwin classic, Our Love is Here to Stay. And didn't she accompany herself beautifully? It was incredible. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself again. I was snapping my fingers and jazz hands at the end. <laughs> yeah, no. That's Anne amazing. Yes, She's Anne amazing. 
Uh, Anne Hapton Calway will be performing at the AHA Virtual Pride event next Tuesday, June 9th. And I believe the link uh, is included here in the chat, so you need to mark your calendars for next Tuesday. You don't want to miss it. And, you know, I just can't get over, you know, switching gears. Um, Ashanti story. I was absolutely blown away. A nurse practitioner, mother, healthy. It's just, it really hit me. And it's the perfect example of the motto, don't downplay your symptoms, no matter how healthy or young you are. I mean, we even have um, Amanda Ferguson, uh, who donated today for her neighbor, who just had a heart attack this weekend. And thankfully, she recognized the symptoms and got to the ER for treatment quickly. So that's what it's all about. It's you critical. Know. Yeah, listening to yourself, but also with the awareness for those of us that, you know, we might take our health for granted, um, you know, knowing how to be there for each other. Absolutely. So, yes, and I see we've jumped up to a little over 3,500 in donations. So thank you so much to everyone who's donated this evening. Yes, thank you. As we near the final performance of the night, this is the last opportunity to make a donation to the American Heart Association or to join the Circle of Red, a VIP meet and greet. So please text hearts and music to 41444 to make a donation. Now, I am thrilled to introduce the last, but certainly not least, performance of the night from the most awarded a cappella group in history, anointed by the Quincy Jones as the baddest vocal cats on the planet, with 10 Grammy Awards, 10 Dove Awards, two NAACP Awards, a Soul Train Award, and more. This is Take Six. Hi, we are Take Six. You know, we all have someone special in our lives, mothers, wives, daughters. Did you know that heart disease and stroke is the number one issue threatening the women in our lives? So we want you to join Take Six and go red for women. I know somebody who declares he's got it made. He won't admit it, but it's just a masquerade. He's a modern day deceiver with a case of false and fever. What a shame! Whoa, it's a mm, And then this dear old sister Sarah, ain't she sweet? She gets the word, next thing you know, it's in the street. By the time it's been repeated, all the truth has been deleted. Oh, what a shame! Another game, oh Lord. Seems like everything we hear is just a tale. But I ain't got time to never, never get my mind to go out. Oh, set us free to lies. Oh, oh, me in the sky. I was once in sin, love. Controlling everything. Magazine with a twisted sense of vision, they treat rumors like religion. What a shame! It's the same old, same old way at these dates. It seems like everything we hear is just a tale.
Yeah. Love is what we need. They are the baddest they cats are. around. They are. They're so good. They're I love amazing. The, the, uh, he was spreading his sandwich. You know, yeah, spreading love, love is what on we the need. sandwich. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Well, thank you for sharing your evening with us in support of this incredible cause and for the generosity of those who brought the thermometer up to $3,669. And I just want to say it is still open. Uh, we spoke, uh, we misspoke that it was the last opportunity. It's actually, it's still open to continue with donations. If you want to share the link with friends and family that maybe couldn't actually watch the live uh, event, but want to make a donation, I, I want to actually give a personal shout out to my mother-in-law and my mom, Deborah Geiger, and some of my friends that uh, showed up to support uh, the event this evening and made donations um, to the cause. And a special thanks to the Circle of Red members who will be joining us for the VIP experience in mere moments. We truly appreciate the life-saving work the American Heart Association provides. And we hope this evening was not only entertaining, but helpful in learning more about the importance of listening to your body and being active in your own rescue. As well as knowing the signs and symptoms to help not only your loved ones, but a stranger who might need emergency medical attention especially since cardiovascular disease kills one woman about every 80 seconds. Just in the hour we've been together, that's simply too many women's lives that have been lost. So thank you again. And we have for the meet and greet, we're already prepared to uh, celebrate your generosity and invite the circle of red members to join us for the VIP meet and greet with Diane Reeves, Kurt Elling, Janice Siegel, your own Jershovsky, Sarah Gazarek, and John A. Kendrick and Lauren Kennan at the link provided. Thank you. Good, Good night, night and, and be, be well. well.